All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the semi-final edi edition, rather, of Just The Tips. I'm joined by my good friend, Druzy, of the Druzy YouTube channel. Druzy, are you ready to talk about some rock-hard semis that we've got coming up? <laughs> well, how did you open that? The semi-final edition, I mean, edition. <laughs> yeah. We're going great. I'm so sloppy. <laughs> I'm so sloppy at the moment. I've had a, a big weekend in Liverpool, but... Uh, it's good to have you here on Just The Tips. We used to do this show regularly together back in 2021. And then I cut you and upgraded you to no one. And it's just been me for a couple of years since. Uh, but today we're going to talk about these two huge clashes this weekend, Druzy. Uh, first of all, if I had to ask you a question to start off this video, what do you think is the biggest narrative coming out of week one of the finals? I think there is one answer that I've got in mind, but what did you think of it? I'd say... How good Hawthorne looked against the Bulldogs um, is probably the biggest narrative. Like, they would probably be my premiership favourite right now, if not, like, second favourite type thing. Obviously, they've got to go the hard way, get through Sydney, but they just have not showed any signs of slowing down in the last three months of footy. Um, the Bulldogs, everyone tipped to be a massive, um, like, a really informed side. They were in the premiership window graphic, all this and that. I haven't been too hot on the dogs this year, but Hawthorne just dominated them. Um, so I'd probably say that um, or the Port story. What do you reckon? Yeah, I was leaning towards more how diabolical Port Adelaide were mm. in that first final. Um, and it's funny that they're playing each other. Just on Hawthorne, it's interesting. When I did my ladder prediction, sorry, my finals prediction, um, which got blown out of the water by that first qualifying final, which I just love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but because I had Port Adelaide going all the way. But um, it would have been better for Hawthorne to potentially play Geelong in week two, which sounds silly to say now, but the reason being is that they would have played three out of four finals at the MCG, even though they'd finished seventh. So it's quirky how that's worked out. Um, before we get into week two, we will go through that all in, in more depth. I do have a couple of housekeeping issues I want to bring up, Drews. First of all, we hit 30,000 subscribers yes! on this YouTube channel. <laughs> so I wanted to... Thanks, pal. I wanted to say thank you to everyone because I've been uh, begging no people problem. to get me there before grand final day. And um, yeah, we smashed it. And hopefully, I reckon with a chance we get to 31. I don't want to count my chickens, Drews, but uh, I like to set little goals. And I just wanted to say thank you very much to people who helped me get over that goal. Um, the next thing we have to address is how everyone went in footy tipping. As for you, Drews, you stopped footy tipping this year. What was that for again? I just can't be bothered like wanting a result to happen. I just want to enjoy the game. Yeah, I can relate to that in a sense in that I tend to go for teams to support my predictions rather than, you know, what is best for my team or or maybe I, I probably do support teams if it helps West Coast, but West Coast is so irrelevant <laughs> now that I do find myself supporting teams so that my predictions don't end up looking too stupid. But anyway, I got three out of four correct tips this week. It started horrendously with Port Adelaide uh, getting slaughtered. I tipped them to win, but everything else went to plan more or less. But we'll shout out how everyone else did in our various competitions. So our m members tipping winner this week was Graz, who, for the record, um, does not support this channel at all. He was <laughs> gifted that membership. All I hear from Graz is he comes in, tells me how shit the Eagles are. And uh, nonetheless, I have to keep reading out his name for great tipping. This is not the first time. So well done, Graz, on four correct tips. Um, our general tipping winner this week was Plushy Pie Man, or Plushy Pie Man, if it's his surname, uh, with four correct tips and a, a margin of 68. So that was the best margin that somebody who got four correct tips got. That's how unexpected yeah. that first result was. Members tipping leader is Real Swift once again with 143. I think he's pretty much got one hand on the title there ahead of Rogue Riots. I think he's three ahead. And our general tipping leader, and I don't know if this is an Eagles fan or a Dockers fan, it's called West Coast Wet Toast Eagles, sorry, with 146 and 760 as the total margin. So well done to all of our winners. But now it's our turn. Let's discuss week two, Drew. So it starts off with Port Adelaide versus Hawthorne at Adelaide Oval. Mm. I'll start out with a question. Do you think we are too quick to completely write off Port Adelaide here if you were to do that? Because I have seen that sentiment so much out there in both the media and like YouTube comments, social media. Everyone's jumped off the Port Adelaide bandwagon hard. To what extent do you think that is justified? Yeah, it's easy to just say, oh, Port are going to lose. Um, but after the performance that they put out, like that was a terrible time to have a stinking game. And like they've been such a good midfield uh, team all year and to get beaten by like Reece Stanley 
Jack Bowes, Tanner Bruin. Like, no disrespect to these guys. Max Holmes, he's had a great season. But, like, you have one of the most stacked midfields in the comp and got beaten at your own game. Um, and then there was just some players that, like, did nothing. Like, Charlie Dixon looked terrible. Um, one thing Hawthorne do very well is run very hard, especially from half back. They use the spread of the ground. I was at the um, Hawks-Dogs game. And you could just see, like, they might win the ball on sort of, I don't know, the wing slash halfback area. And they'll switch it to the pocket just to find space to run into. And I don't know if Port have the forwards to go with guys like Scrimshaw um, or, the, you know, those running halfbacks, Hardwick that they have. Um, and yeah, I don't know, that long down the line brand that Port brought to the Geelong game is exact. that would play into Hawthorne's hands exactly. So if we're going off the last week of finals, um, yeah, it won't be competitive, but obviously Port will change it up. Ken Hinckley's under a lot of pressure um, heading into this game because they could go out in straight sets again. Um, and yeah, nothing has really changed in September for Port Adelaide. So I think it's probably fair, the criticism that they're getting because th- like their measuring stick of success is how they went in comparison to previous years. They want to be in a grand final and win a grand final, obviously. So to fall short of that goal after finishing second and getting that home qualifying final to go out in straight sets would be a calamity. So I think that is warranted. I hope that answered your question. You go. Yeah, I mean, certainly the criticism is justified of, of a result like that when you consider how well Port finished the season. I, I watched that Port Fremantle game quite intently. Um, and in not just that game in isolation, but I was very impressed with Port Adelaide there. Um, their defense in particular, uh, the way they played as a very committed group and like defensive efforts, getting a hand on balls that they shouldn't. Um, not for the... Oh, wait, no, don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> going to make a joke. Leave that in. Something that you know plenty about, Drewzy. Oh, um, and come to, on, I no. think to back that come up, on. I think to back that up with such a lacklustre performance in week one, they, they, I mean, they got beaten in their own game. And, and to be fair to Geelong, their midfield on paper hasn't been good, but I think the last six to eight weeks, they have been one of the best clearance sides. Um, I actually saw something funny that you will laugh at that David King said on SEN. He said that was Geelong's best scores from clearance game in the last five years Yeah, if you take out their games against West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which made me laugh but that also cry count. a little bit internally. Yeah, it, it, it shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't. But back on this game, um, I, I suppose the question is, is there any chance Port Adelaide just revert back to being the best version of themselves for this game? I think they'll need to be to beat Hawthorne. I think the the team that ended the year in the home and away season, the one that beat Sydney by 19 goals, the one that beat Fremantle in Perth and, and held them off when Fremantle had the crowd and everything to play for, that version of Port Adelaide can beat Hawthorne. I guess it's the extent to which we think they will show up. Their finals record is awful lately. They've had a 71-point loss to the Western Bulldogs in a home prelim. Mm. They lost by eight goals to Brisbane. Uh, in, at the Gabba, they lost to the Giants last year by four goals in a really ugly performance. And now this probably takes the cake as the worst one, yeah. considering they were favourites as well. So with that all being said, um, we, we've slaughtered Port Adelaide <laughs> yeah. here. And you did talk up Hawthorne. I suppose, in summary, how do you think this game's going to go? Yeah, I think the like holes have been put into the sale of Port Adelaide. Like After that game, they all just looked dishevelled. They, like just looked truly defeated and I don't think a week is enough time to turn that around and I don't know you, there's clearly holes in Port Adelaide's game that got exploited by a better coach and Sam Mitchell is one of the best coaches or he's probably been the best coach this year maybe Chris Scott has an argument there as well but um, I think Hawthorne win this one um, the footy that they've been playing for the sort of three months, last three months has been really good. Even Port Adelaide, like, even though they finished second, I don't want to sound like a hater Port Adelaide fans. They had a really good win against the Bulldogs. But they, like, limped over the line against Melbourne, um, beat a poor Carlton team. Um, even against Freo, it was nine goals 13 to 13 goals nine. So it's like, I don't know, a bit of inaccuracy plays a part. So I don't know if I'm completely convinced um, by how good Port ended the season compared to a team like Hawthorne. I think Hawthorne win this one um, and, yeah, get it done by a comfortable, like, four goals. Fair enough. I'm a little more positive away they, uh, around the way they ended the season, but they come up against the team that ended the season as one of the 
former teams of the competition and still may be that. The last time they met, Drews, um, I like to look at how teams go head-to-head at certain venues, but the last game is so hard to get a read on because I don't know if you remember this game, but Hawthorne were like, I can't remember exactly how much. They were about seven goals up, I reckon, and at three-quarter time, yeah. I think it was 28 points the margin, and Port Adelaide came from the clouds, and I think they kicked two in the last minute. Yeah to win that game. So technically, Port Adelaide won the last battle between these two sides, but I do think there's probably been a maturation of Hawthorne since then. Yep. And certainly with Port Adelaide's you know, lack of confidence, I think you'd have to think there's going to be a lack of confidence. I think Port Adelaide will make a better account of themselves than they did against Geelong, but I don't see them realistically winning this game. I'll be very impressed if they do. So I'll tip Hawthorne by... Four goals. I think that's fair. That's what I said. So we move to the next semi, and we've got the Giants versus the Brisbane Lions, which is a rematch of the uh, 2019 semi-final between these two sides. That one ended with the Giants beating them at the Gabba and making their way to the grand final that year. Now, I I feel like both of these sides could make it to a grand final, potentially, uh, depending on how they go against Geelong, of course, but... I do think both of these sides are formidable, and obviously Brisbane made the grand final last year, and GWS are a pretty damn good final side. How do you? Who do you think was more impressive last week? GWS lost by a goal, Mm. and Brisbane beat Carlton after getting ten goals in front and then sort of relaxing. (laughs) Um, Man, GWS have been such a good side to watch this year, and I think that game against Sydney was one of the best, probably the best game I've watched all season. The Mm. intensity was so high. Um, the way that they brought their brand in such a high pressure game, like that, they got the tsunami going through some like just I don't know, just to see a, their brand played on that stage in a pressure game like that was so admirable. And they just fell away in the last quarter, um, just from Isaac Heaney keeping Sydney in the game all throughout. He was incredible. I think GWS's l- effort and uh, the brand that they played is probably more impressive because Carlton didn't really put up a fight. They didn't bring any pressure, kept going long down the line, and Brisbane's sort of half just had a field day. Um, I Yeah, I think GWS have more gears to go than Brisbane do in this final series. What do you reckon? I, I do sort of agree. I, I just really respect Brisbane, and I feel like I don't want to discount them. It's equally hard to say that GWS will go out in straight sets. They're a very yeah. proven finals quantity. And when they make finals, they generally win more than one. I think that's the, there's like a quirky stat there. Um, and they've gone deep a few times with, uh, without making the top four and getting the double chance. Last week, they got like five goals up against Sydney, which is a great effort. And then it took a pretty Herculean effort from Isaac Heaney to overcome them. The, the head-to-head of these two teams is interesting. So... Both times I've met this year, GWS has won. Most recently at the Gabba in round 22, uh, they won by 18 points. And I think Brisbane kicked like eight goals, 16. That's been a real problem for them. The positive side for them is if they can correct that one variable and have a good night in front of goal, then suddenly, you know, everything changes. I I do remember a thing throughout the year, their expected score differential was like one of the best in the league. And that was even when they had that poor start to this year. So Mm -hmm. there's that to bear in mind. And the time before that was when um, Brisbane played them at Monica in round seven of this year when Brisbane weren't going so hot. Were they two and five or something? GWS won that game by about 11 goals. So other than that, these two sides actually generally play at Monica. So they don't actually have that much of a body of work at this particular ground at NG Stadium. The last time they met there was back in 2020 and Brisbane won by 20 points. And prior to this year as well, Brisbane won five on the, five on the trot against the Giants. So... Without all being said, I mean, <laughs> I think that skews... It probably skews in GWS's favour. They've beaten them twice this year, and this is a home ground game. I think... I think if you... Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, I would have said Brisbane are the better team here. But I think in finals, I just feel inclined to trust GWS a bit more. Is that the way you're leaning? I just feel like um, the style that... GWS play they move the ball a lot by hand like they'll try to nullify the impact that Brisbane's halfbacks and Harris Andrews have like they're not just going to bomb it long I feel because that's that plays into Brisbane's hands that's what they like to do score off turnover every club likes to do that but (laughs) GWS um, West Coast don't (laughs) (laughs) GWS I feel like um, will 
use, I don't know, I feel like they'll impose their brand better than what Brisbane can. I don't mean to sound disrespectful to Brisbane, but they're not the same side they were last year. They're not as threatening, I feel. Um, yeah, it's a do or die game. One team season's going to be ended, um, and I just don't think GWS are are going to be that team because, yeah, last week they played the number one rated team in the competition and, yeah, were probably the better team for three three quarters and then just fell away. So I'm going to back GWS mm. to get it done. Maybe in a close one, though. Maybe like, a, I don't know, like nine points, GWS get the win. I'm trying to think how many away finals Brisbane have won. I think in 22, they did beat Melbourne at the MCG, set them out at straight sets. Yeah. Other than that, they have mostly had their finals in at the Gabba, um, other than the grand final, and I think there might be an Adelaide Oval one that they lost. I can't, I can't really remember now. Yeah, I think they lost but one think, to Brisbane, uh, to Melbourne at Adelaide Oval. At Adelaide Oval. And they yes. lost one to the Dogs at... Yeah, uh, the at the Gabba. Gabba. Yeah. That Gabba, that's right. I think that was in the same year. Yeah. So with all that being said, uh, I find it so hard to eliminate Brisbane from the final series here, but I think I trust UWS a bit more. One other thing is Jack Payne is under an injury cloud. I don't think he's been ruled out. He's a chance to play. So structurally... Toby Bedford comes Jesse back Hogan. in for GWS as well, which is massive. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I think I'm going to side with the team that is... Just, so relentlessly good in finals and probably I just have a little bit more faith in going into this game, but I could see any outcome. I'll say GWS win this by 11 points. That's almost what I said. <laughs> Honestly, both times you've said your tips, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you very much for tuning in to Just the Tips uh, for the third last time this year. I think if my math is correct, yeah, the third last time. Drizzy, thank you for joining me. And of course, uh, let us know in the comments, guys, what your tips are and anything else you think is relevant to this game. I will see you in the next one and goodbye. True footy 30K, yeah.